When I first started primary school and I had to start getting serious about learning how to read in English, I had a pretty hard time. I even had to be in the ESL class for a while. But by my second year of primary school, I was already one of the strongest readers and writers in my class. I loved English, I loved reading, I loved all of the writing assignments that we had to do, and I was really thriving. In primary school, I didn't have a lot of friends, and most of my free time at school was spent in the library, curled up with a good book. In middle school, I started making more friends, but I still spent my weekends in my room reading. And then high school came along and our teachers dumped a bunch of required reading lists onto us and rather than letting us just read and enjoy the material, we had to analyze it to death and we had to write essays about it and we had to read the same books over and over and it really sucked the fun out of reading. I'm a rebellious person, I don't like being told what to do, and all of a sudden this thing that I loved seemed to have become a weapon against me. I no longer had the same time I used to to read the books that I actually wanted to read and the books that I actually liked. And so during high school I feel like I spent a lot less of my free time reading books that I enjoyed. It was no longer something that I loved, it was an obligation that I had to do for school. And after high school I never really did pick up the books with the same love that I used to again. I can't blame high school entirely for this, I have to say that Netflix and YouTube also played a role, but reading is something that I've always loved. So I'm challenging myself to read 50 pages every day for the next 30 days, which should take about an hour, hour and a half. The key to doing anything consistently is to make a habit out of it and make the time for it in your day. And considering right now I can make the time to watch multiple episodes a day of my favorite legal dramas, I think I can make the time to block off an hour to read 50 pages of a book. I'm hoping that after this 30 day reading boot camp, I will be able to naturally incorporate reading more and more into my daily life. Because the truth is there are a lot of great books that I wanna read and I know they're great because all of my favorite people that I admire the most keep recommending the same ones. And the only reason I'm not reading them is because I'm not making the time for it. The theory is that it takes about 21 days to form a habit and 28 days to solidify it. So hopefully after 30 days, I will have fallen back in love with reading and realized that reading can be just as enjoyable and rewarding as watching Netflix. If you also want to start reading more, then I encourage you to join me for this challenge and I'll leave links in the description box to all of the books that I read during this month to help you get started and who knows, maybe you find something down there that you'll enjoy. So let's get started! days of reading have gone by and I've reached the end of my challenge. I would say that this challenge had some failures and successes. It failed in the sense that I didn't end up reading 50 pages every single day as I set out to. However, it did succeed in the fact that it kind of reminded me why I love reading and helped to reinstill that habit into my routine and encourage me to do it more often. 50 pages a day for 30 days makes 1,500 pages. I actually only ended up reading 672 pages, which is not even half. I wrote down in my bullet journal every single day how many pages I read that day, and in total there were only actually seven days when I read the full amount of 50 pages. But those are just the numbers. Now let's get into some of the wisdom about reading that I picked up and sort of realized throughout the course of this challenge. I concluded that there are three major types of books beyond just thinking of 
fiction and nonfiction. The types of books that I came up with are, first of all, stories. So these would include anything from novels and fables to even biographies and autobiographies. Generally, to me, stories are the books that you can read cover to cover for pleasure without analyzing everything in depth, without needing to remember every detail. You don't need to take notes on them and you can kind of just go through them beginning to end and read as much at a time as you want. The next type are books that teach and books that develop your mind and your mindset. So things like books on spirituality, personal development, finance and psychology. These are books that I think you should take your time with and you should only really read maybe 10 to 20 pages in a day of these types of books because in between you need to give your brain time to absorb and digest that information. You need to take notes. Very often these types of books will have written exercises that you have to do in a journal. I don't think you get the full benefit out of it if you try to read it too quickly. So for example, if you try to rush through a self-help book, you're not gonna actually get the full benefit of implementing the things that you learn from that book because you can't remember all those details and all of those teachings so quickly. And the third type of book are reference books books that aren't even designed for you to read them the whole way through ever. Things like encyclopedias, manuals, and textbooks. These are books that you would generally use for research when you want to find an answer to a specific question or just find out more about a particular topic. They often contain massive amounts of information and only some of that information will be relevant to you. And so these are books that are just nice to have on hand, but you never really need to read the entire thing. Throughout my 30 day reading challenge, I found that the days when I felt the best were the days when I read a moderate number of pages. So like if I read 20 pages that day, I generally felt pretty good about it. I had spent some time reading and enjoyed having that in my day, but I didn't read so much that it started to feel like a chore. The days when I read 50 pages, I kind of felt that I had to force myself to do it and at some points it just got really boring. Forcing yourself to do anything is gonna take the fun out of it. So although I'm happy that I challenged myself to do this, I don't think that having a specific target for the number of pages to read in a day is necessarily the best way to go about it. But let's talk about the books that I read <laughs> during this challenge. I started the challenge off with You're a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. I had borrowed this book from my boyfriend literally a couple months ago, started it and just never finished it because I was going through it so slowly. So this was the first book I started off with and I'm really glad that I finally had some motivation to finish this book. I really enjoyed this book. It has some elements of like spirituality, law of attraction, like magical thinking stuff. But beyond that, I love how this book just has a fair amount of like whimsy and that kind of touch of dreamer mentality that I think is lacking in a lot of people's lives. Jen Sincero really just encourages people to chase their dreams and to make money in ways that they love rather than settling for jobs that make them miserable. And I really love that about this book. Some might argue this isn't a very realistic view of the world, but I personally I personally am a dreamer and an idealist and I, for that reason this book did really appeal to me because it solidified in me that knowledge that it is possible to make money doing what you love and that hard work does pay off. The past few years I've been in this cycle of kind of going back and forth between I should be realistic and get a real normal job and study for a field of work that is guaranteed to pay off versus no, I should buckle down and just do the hard work and push, 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 push and never ever give up on my dreams until something somehow starts working. And I think this book encouraged me a lot 
to do the latter. I don't know if it's gonna work out that way yet, but I definitely enjoyed reading it a lot. The mistake I did make with this book though is that in my rush to finish it for the reading challenge, I didn't take the time to do all of the written journaling exercises as much as I should have and the meditations and everything else that Jen Sincero recommends. So this is definitely a book that I wanna buy for myself and reread to fully absorb everything that was in here. The next book I picked up is Make It Happen by Jordana Levin, Manifest the Life of Your Dreams. So this is another one that is centered around manifestation and the law of attraction and that kind of thing. I actually haven't finished this. I was about two thirds of the way through when I realized I didn't want to read so many pages of it in a day because it's the kind of book that needs to be worked through slowly. I also didn't super mega love this book overall. I like her her concept of the law of attraction and her understanding of it. However, I don't know, I just felt like it, it was over complicating the subject a little bit and maybe it didn't need such a big book to make her point. Um, I am still going to finish this and maybe reread it and just give it a shot and, you know, see if <laughs> I was missing something the first time, but as far as my first impressions of this book, it's not my favorite like law of attraction manifesting related book I've ever read. It kind of was a drag for me to force myself to try to read 50 pages of this every day. So I switched to my next book, which is Hippie by Paolo Coelho. This was by far the easiest book to read during this challenge. The other books that I read are in the self-help spirituality kind of realm. This book, although still being centered around some topics of spirituality, is a novel. So this is a story. It's an easier book to read through cover to cover and kind of sit down and enjoy as many pages of it at a time as I wanted to because it wasn't necessarily trying to teach me any Thing. I didn't have to take notes. There were no journaling exercises. I didn't need to remember every single detail of this book to get the full benefits out of it. It was just something that I could read for pleasure and enjoyment. And for that reason, this was the easiest book to get through and I really loved it. It's a very beautiful story about kind of the hippie culture in the 70s and I really, really loved reading this. His Books have a beautiful simplicity and humanness to them. Um, they're very romantic. My personal favorite and the book that he is most known for is The Alchemist. And it's written in a way that feels ancient. It's like a fable, an ancient story. And it's just very like spiritual and beautiful. I really like Paolo Coelho's writing and I would highly recommend his books to anyone. My last book for this challenge is Choose Wonder Over Worry by Amber Ray. I had just started this book when the challenge was over and I'm continuing to read it now. This is another one of those books that's kind of centered around chasing your dreams, doing what instinctively feels right for you rather than settling for workplaces that you feel in your gut are making you miserable. I read it because I thought it would be a good sort of book for someone like me who suffers from anxiety. It's not necessarily so far talking a lot about anxiety and panic attacks and things like that, but it has touched on those subjects. I won't be able to give a full review until I finish reading this, but so far I am really enjoying it. And it has that similar element of idealism and whimsy as the Jen Sincero book, in that I feel it kind of just encourages people to live their truth rather than to let society and other people's expectations put them in boxes that they never ever wanted to be in. Having done this challenge now, I feel really encouraged. I feel like I definitely accomplished what I set out to do, which was to reignite that spark and that love for reading. I'm definitely looking forward to getting more books, reading more books, kind of spending less time consuming mindless content on the internet. I picked up a few habits along the way that I think helped me read more. For example, when I go to the bathroom, normally I bring my phone with me 
movie and I play games on my phone or scroll through Instagram while I'm on the toilet and it's just like a giant waste of time. So maybe instead of taking your phone into the bathroom with you, take a book instead. And even if you only read like one or two pages while you're in there, it's still a way to incorporate reading very easily into your life. Another thing I think would be worthwhile to do is just to carry a book in your bag at all times because you never know when you're gonna be in a situation where you have to stand around and wait. The next time you're standing in line or you have to wait for a few minutes before your doctor's appointment or anything like that, if you have a book in your bag, you might be able to just sit down and read a few pages instead of scrolling through whatever social media apps you normally scroll through. Also through the process of identifying the different types of books, I have come to terms with the fact that it's okay to be reading multiple books at the same time. I previously always thought that if I read more than one book at a time, I would get distracted and forget about the old book and only read the new book. First of all, if that happens, it's a sign that the book you were reading before is boring and maybe you don't need to finish it. But also I think if you're reading one story book and one educational or self-help book, they really won't interfere with one another. I think story books are better for like bedtime when you just wanna be laying down and reading. And then educational and self-help books and things like that are better to be reading during the day when you're gonna be able to, you know, sit down at a desk, take your notes, do your little journaling prompts and all of that stuff that you need to do to fully engage with those types of books. Overall, I'm super happy with the outcome of this challenge and I know that there's gonna be more reading in my future as a result of doing this. Let me know in the comments what some of your favorite books are and any that you would recommend to me. I hope this video inspired you guys to do more reading as well. If you like this video and you wanna see more like it, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below and click the notification bell to be notified every single time I upload. You can also follow me on all of my social media, which is linked down below, as well as my Patreon, where you can donate to support this channel, and my art shop, where you can buy my art, such as these Christmas present earrings that I'm wearing today that are coming very, very soon. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.